Brian, last month's quarterly grain stocks report was bearish, especially on the soybean side when you look at stocks. Now, when we look at the reports today, stocks were a little bit heavier with soybeans. So what do you make of, of today? That's the, uh, so as you had mentioned, we knew that uh, both the ending stocks for corn and soybeans should be raised in this report based on what the uh, the stocks came in on the quarterly stock report at the end of September. So the missing piece of the puzzle was what does the USDA do with yield? And expectations were for the soybean yield to be raised from the September WASD report. Uh, they went really to the upper end of the estimates and uh, went uh, almost a bushel higher from the September WASD report to 51.5 bushels per acre. Uh, that did take the carry out to 320 million bushels. So uh, definitely up from the 185 that we had in, in the September WASDE report. But uh, really with that big of a, a jump in the yield, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Uh, our own internal number was thinking something closer to 370 million bushels. So this was still about 50 million bushels less than, than what we thought the worst case scenario might have been. Last month's report, too, it seemed like wheat was the shining star. When you look at the markets, it seems like like wheat may be the shining star today. What do you take of, of the wheat numbers, too? You're right, Betsy. So the stocks were uh, bullish on the on the stocks report for wheat. Uh, and at the end of September, we did see the uh, the domestic stocks ever so slightly higher than the trade estimates. Uh, although they were still down from the uh, the September WASD report. But I think the big story on wheat is the world stocks uh, and that coming in a little bit more than 3 million tons less than what the USDA had world stocks uh, on the September WASD report. So the, the wheat continues to be the, the uh, market that has declining world stocks. And uh, we've been thinking wheat would be the leader and it looks like it's going to continue to still be the leader. Are there any other takeaways you have from the reports today? Well, I, I know we really didn't even touch on corn. And so for corn, uh, I think there were some that thought the yield might go down a touch, might go up a touch. Uh, in general, I think the, the trade really wasn't looking for a major departure from the yield from last month in either direction. And, and they raised it 0.2 bushels per acre. So um, stocks did come in a little bit more than uh, what the, what the uh, pre-trade estimates were looking for on corn. I don't know if it was really that material. Um, the world stocks did come in about three and a half million tons more than where the USDA had the world stocks in September. But when I lump the corn in with the wheat and just look at corn plus wheat world stocks, they're relatively unchanged uh, month to month. So I think from a feed grain perspective, uh, we still more or less are anticipating to have about the same amount of corn and wheat stocks combined. And so I think you're going to continue to see wheat gain on corn to continue to make sure it's priced out of feed rations. All right, there you have it. Well, thanks, Brian, for the time. And for those of you watching, my name is Betsy Jibben, and I'm the media director for Ag Market Consulting.